so the uh, greenhouse is all finished, 99% finished. A couple little things I want to do still, but uh, and the pigs are killed and the goats are killed and they're all in the freezer, processed, I guess I should say. Uh, so it's on to the next project, which uh, I'm a little nervous about. My, As I've said before, my carpentry skills are not the best, so, uh, but you're not going to learn if you don't do something, right? So uh, I'm going to clear all this wood from over here, my wood pile. I'm going to move it temporarily over by the chicken coop. And then we're going to, uh, I'm going to try to build a little pole shed here, just as practice. And if it goes really well, maybe I'll build a pole barn uh, next summer. So we'll then be able to keep animals over the winter. Uh, so yeah, I'm just going to move the wood now today. I mentioned moving wood and uh, my whole family's leaving now. So I think that's pretty standard. So if I ever need a loan time, I just need to say, hey, you guys want to move some wood? And they'll find something else to do real fast. Uh, yeah, I'm going to move all this out of here and then we're going to measure up and see what kind of what the situation is. I'm hoping to do a 12 by 8 uh, shed um, and hopefully it's going to look cool. So, uh, And it'll also give me space to get some stuff out of the shed and make room in there. But now that all the animal food's gone, I'm, I'm doing pretty good with space. So, uh, But anyway, let's see how that goes. Let's move some wood. stacked up here. I use that box and put some metal roofing over it to uh, do all the hardwood that's that I cut down uh, in 2020 so that's probably the driest stuff I have in terms of hardwood and then most of the softwood I piled up here and I use the pallets from the old wood pile and a couple from the compost because the compost is going to get taken away pretty soon anyway. So I got the pallets to keep them off the ground. I do have someone coming to give me a quote on a wood stove tomorrow so uh, if it's reasonable, we may get a wood stove. I know the wood is not like seasoned really well, but I think we can make do. And I got loads of wood still over there that was cut in 2020. That would be, uh, you know, decent to burn if I could get it underneath something drying out. And that's why we're doing our next project, which is to uh, put a pole shed here. So in this area where I had my wood piled up, uh, moved over enough so I'll be able to get my gate open to, to the pasture. We're gonna, I'm gonna attempt to make a pole shed. My original thoughts were to make it about 12 by 8. Uh, I gotta do a little bit of math about how big pallets are and stuff because I want to have uh, pallets in there to put wood on but space in between the walk so I think 8 feet might be good if I turn the pallets short ways but I, I'll just do some math on that and figure it out. And uh, I still have some metal roofing left over like I have on the uh, what I had the pigs in and the goat the goats were in so I'll be able to use that but it's going to be along here got some more hardwood there to, uh, from my pruning earlier in the year that I'm going to chop up as well uh, but yeah we're going to have a decent sized woodshed here that's going to be for drying wood and for putting the lawnmower and the wood chipper and stuff in so it's not sitting inside my very small shed taking up space um, and it's going to be like I said the experiment of if it works out half decently then I'll probably make a pole shed burn uh, next summer uh, so that I'll be able to overwinter animals because I want to get sheep and I want to get uh, breeding sheep so that I don't have to buy them every year. Um, so yeah, that's going to be the next part is peeling logs and it won't be today and it might not be this week. We're getting a big rain event this week so hopefully it, it's not as bad as they say and I'll get a few days uh, this week outside working but uh, right now it looks like it might be a while before I get back at any any big jobs uh, so yeah so we've been having uh, <coughs> issues with the hens since we put them in moved them over to the greenhouse and the issue is that the eggs have dropped significantly um, however I don't think it's a lack of production I think the chickens are finding creative places to lay their eggs so I found some out in where the goat's shelter is, and now I find a few under here. So I'm going to use Martin's uh, 
handy dandy little picker upper and see if I can transfer the eggs over to a shovel. Also a Martin shovel. We're getting high tech with the tools here now. I'm going to try to transfer the eggs over to the shovel because they're stuck way inside of there. So I don't think it's going to work. I think I'll break them, but I need to put something along here to stop the chickens from coming in to, uh, to lay. So there are, there are the eggs in question. Egg rescue. Very delicate operation. Five eggs I got. Nice big one too, one of them. So I'll just have another quick peek around in here and if, uh, if there's no more eggs, I'm gonna block it up. Hopefully this leads to more eggs inside the, the greenhouse and not so many under the barn. As um, you already know, you probably know, we butchered um, our pigs and our goats. And some people asked in the comments over the summer when they found out that we were gonna eat the goats, um, if, if we had ever eaten it before, or they'd mentioned that they hadn't eaten it before, or if we knew any type of recipes. So um, it's not so much a recipe, but I have got some ground goat here. I've got uh, 1.4 pounds, and I'm gonna make some goat burgers this evening. Now I did make these a few days ago, but that was before we had mixed in some more of the fat. We took some of the pork fat and mixed it in to the ground goat to kind of make it, um, well, fattier. And then when it's fattier, it'll kind of uh, collect together a little bit better for actually making patties. So my recipe is pretty simple and I'm not a chef or anything, but I have got, um, I have the ground pork, bit of salt. I like to use this um, this shawarma flavored marinade. This was, I bought this at the grocery store and I've used it with a couple things, but it, it's good for lamb. And so that's why I tried to have it with the pork and it tasted really nice. So that, we do have an egg because the last time we made it, um, there wasn't as much fat in it. So I'm, I'm putting an egg in so that it kind of mixes together. And we've got salt and pepper. So when you see it, it does look a lot like ground beef. It's not quite as pink, I guess, depending on the ground beef that you have, but it, um, it's definitely darker than pork. But I mean, if I didn't know any better, I guess maybe I'd say like it was ground um, turkey, which I've used before. It kind of reminds me of the color of that, but even a little bit darker. Somewhere between pork, beef and turkey is the color. Um, I have it all mixed in. It's sticking together pretty well. Um, looks like the patties are definitely gonna like be really well stuck together. I don't even know if I would have needed the um, the egg, but it's in there anyway. It's no problem with that. Um, I'm just gonna heat up my pan and form the patties. I'll make kind of smaller patties. I think this will make about about four because we have four buns. I really like. Well, we all really like these uh, these brioche buns. I got these at Walmart, but they're so good. I cannot make a better bun myself, so those are the ones we buy. They definitely don't stick together as well as like a uh, a beef burger would, so I guess it is good that I use the uh, the egg. I think it's because there's a lot more moisture in them, just just I guess because the way that we had processed them. All right, as you can see, we have got um, three in the pan, and I still have more ground beef here, probably enough for about three more. So I guess we can get six kind of small burgers out of this, so I'll cook them all now, and then I take the uh, the other cooked burgers and use them in wraps or something tomorrow for lunch or, or whatever. Okay. 
right, the, uh, the last three burgers are cooking. Um, we've got these ones cooked there. So now I'm going to make a, um, like a white sauce for them. Normally I do this with yogurt, but I forgot to get yogurt, so I'm gonna use sour cream and tahini, garlic, and cumin. Um, and it's like a, a bit of lime juice. So we'll see how it is with sour cream. We never had it with sour cream. We'll see. All right, one of the most important parts <laughs> of uh, this recipe is that you toast one of these buns in way too much butter. They're not so great if they're not toasted, but if you toast them in butter, they're so good. Sir. Sauce between the patties or no? Maybe because it's not gonna be wet otherwise. Right? Yeah. No. Mmm. Very, very excellent. Yeah, we haven't done um, we haven't done the goat just like straight goat taste to see what it really tastes like because I've added that that shawarma spice, but uh, it's really good like that, and we'll try it another time. But anyway. Just thought we'd share one of the uh, ways that we were eating the goats. Sorry about the all of the noises and the terrible lighting in the tiny kitchen, but that's it. Okay, bye. What a relief. It's over. Because the goats were 600 bucks. Yeah. We only spent 600 bucks a feed on the pigs the whole year around there. Yeah, right?